Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I'm finally back with one of my favorite video series, Anatomy Quick Tips, where I get to stuff you full of as much anatomical information as I can in a short amount of time. I think this is going to be the most Tarantino-esque one so far, because after much soul searching, I have decided that this episode is going to be all about feet. I know a lot of people struggle with feet, but don't worry, I'm going to break it down, and by the end of this video, you're going to feel very comfortable. So, let's get started started and jump right into some of the structure of the foot. I always like to point out the overlooked asymmetry in things. So the first thing I want to point out is that the bones of the ankle protrude a little bit higher on the interior side than they do on the exterior side. So that just means the tibia, it's up a little higher, rides a little higher than the fibula, which rides a little lower on that exterior side. And if you were to break down the forward view of this, it might look a little bit like a wrench with a spool in the middle. And I'm definitely going to be exaggerating these differences a little bit, so I'm making my angle pretty steep. But the important thing is that you do notice that there is an angle to the ankle joint. So it's not just a straight line across parallel with the ground. In fact, most things in anatomy usually have an offset angle to them. So even the toes have a bit of an angle. And once again, I'm exaggerating it a lot, but the important thing is that you try to keep things from having too many boring straight lines. One of the other extremely important aspects of the front view of the foot is the whole shape of the foot itself. You can see that there is a very sloping line coming from the exterior and the interior kind of falls off a cliff. So you can see how it builds up very high and then just drops off on the interior side. It's like a little roller coaster. But let's move on to the structure of the side of the foot. Uh, you can notice I mainly am dividing it into three parts. The forward mass, which can include the toes, the heel, and then the leg and ankle, which I've kind of just joined into one object. So you can see here, it's important that we notice that the heel protrudes backward a little bit. We don't want it to feel like it's super in line with the leg itself. We want it to feel like it protrudes a little bit, so that way we have a nice archway that supports the whole weight of the body. The archway is certainly very forward heavy, but nonetheless, it should have a little bit of a back to it as well. And pedaling right along, I think we can talk briefly about toes. You can think of toes as the stairway to the foot because the most basic way to simplify them is just by making them look like little boxy staircases, little two steps everywhere. But of course, the big toe looks slightly different because it actually has one less joint than the other toes. Uh, so that one looks a bit more like a ramp rather than a staircase. And of course you're aware that toes get smaller and arch back around as you get farther to the exterior. Although you can sometimes make the second and even third toe longer than the big toe itself. So anyway, I think it's time we do a quick recap and go over some of the most common mistakes I see when I'm looking at people drawing feet. The most common mistake is people just giving the foot too much symmetry. If you had to walk away with just one thing from this video, I hope it would be the exterior slope and interior cliff of the foot because that's gonna make everything look a lot better. Anyway, other common mistakes, people not giving a heel to their feet, that makes them look very off balance. People often make their feet either too tall or too short, and personally, if you were to err one way, I would prefer the low and long approach because I always think that looks a little more stylistic. And of course, it's common to see people make toes into little sausages or triangles instead of going with the whole stairs approach. So do you feel yourself getting more comfortable with feet yet? I think I can actually improve this one up here a little bit by adding that extra angle to the ankle as well because I made it very parallel, which goes against everything I talked about very early on. So there we go, I think that looks a little more artistic. And moving right along, I think we can talk a little bit about the movement of the joints. It's good to remember that the whole tilted ankle joint thing that we talked about with the whole wrench and the spool being at an angle, uh, that will actually affect how things turn and move. So hopefully you can try to make all of your ankle movements a little bit more dynamic. And when it comes to the full extension of the foot, I think it's very helpful to note that it pretty much forms straight lines going all the way from the lower leg to the toes. That makes it super easy to draw. You can just make some straight lines, then add some toes and a heel, and you're set. Meanwhile, the foot will not bend very far in the other direction, so you don't gotta worry too much about that. 
And when it comes to other axes of rotation, it's important to note that your foot can roll inward a little bit. And of course, that's how you twist your ankle. And that's all due to the, once again, the angle of the spool and wrench being, you know, slightly tilted downward. I don't think it would be possible to roll it in the other direction at all. That would probably be incredibly painful. So I will talk quickly about reductions. Personally, when I'm drawing a leg from the front or back and I just have to do it really fast, I like to simplify things into a basic peg leg. You can add a little bit of extra mass on the bottom, but it's basically just a taper. And if it's from the front, you can throw in a big toe just as a reference point. Or if it's from the back, you don't really have to throw in anything. For a lot of my quick simplifications, I always like to just focus on a few different things. So one being the heel, one being the main mass of the foot, and the other being the big toe. I think with those three things, you can pretty much just draw quick little doodles of the foot in any position. So I tried to make them a bit color coded just so you can see what my brain's thinking about anytime I'm drawing a foot. Of course, this requires a little bit of 3D form understanding built into your brain, but hopefully all of that structure talk earlier helped you visualize it a bit better. So now hopefully you're free to just have a little bit of fun with it. You can explore your pedial creativity as much as you want. Uh, much like hands, feet are capable of showing lots of personality. The complexity involved also makes them pretty fun for dynamic posing and perspective studies. And I know I didn't really get around to mentioning it much, but the bottom of the foot can also be divided up into an interior and exterior side. I think I actually made the toes backwards on these foot at first, but that's fine, I'll just fix it. And you can see here that the interior side with the big toe should be the one with the big arch in it. And meanwhile, the exterior side will just kind of lay flat against the ground for the most part. All right, so I think that pretty much sums up all of that. But of course, I love to do some painting. So for this next little part, I just want to work on my colors a little bit and try to paint some feet from imagination and see how that goes. Wait, I guess that's only partially true. That little tiny foot thing in the top left corner was actually based on a photo I had seen earlier. But otherwise, I'm going to be trying to paint these to look realistic without any reference. So I gave myself a nice little variety of different feet, although I probably should have drawn some from the front or back in hindsight. Oh well, a lot of side views going on here. And much like I've talked about, anytime I'm painting, I try to throw in as much hue variation as I can. So with the ankle bones sticking out there, the tibia and fibula, you can bring out a little bit more palish colors where the bones come in through the skin a little bit. And of course, the main thing I want to do is bring in a lot of reddish tones, especially along the bottom of the foot, anywhere where there's a lot of wear and tear. Also on the toes, I think we'll get a lot of red as well. And of course, it's just a matter of blending things and making it look nice and pretty. So you can also try to hint at the tendons and things, maybe some veins if you're very ambitious. Uh, but all that stuff can catch a little bit of highlights here and there. Just bring in some really strong reds on the pads of the feet. And I think the thing I realized halfway through painting these was that you can kind of divide the foot up into a lower and an upper half. So you can kind of make a little bit of a crease right through the middle where it's kind of dividing up. You have this top part that kind of is more rounded and then you have the bottom part where, you know, it's all the pads of the foot and everything is. Um, and there can be like a little break between that. So I tried to emphasize it once again when I'm painting. Just try to emphasize anything you can, any possible color change, any possible value change. Just try to make it look a little more interesting. That's really the fun part of being an artist, just exaggerating anything you want. So I think those look mildly realistic. I'm pretty satisfied with them. You can always let me know. I probably messed up something horribly, but I'm still completely loving this brush just for quickly rendering stuff out. And before you ask any questions, just go watch the painting like a sculptor video if you have any questions about the brush. And there's really only one thing left to do. If you've watched Anatomy Quick Tips before, you may know that at the end of the video, I like to coagulate all this knowledge by doing a little bit of animating. Aside from 3D modeling, I still think animating is the best way to just make sure you understand the form of an object. So we can just draw a quick foot from the side. We can make it stand up on its toes, maybe flip our camera around 90 degrees, make it stand up on its tippy toes. Maybe he'll fall over when we keep rotating the camera. 
Maybe we can just zoom the camera in straight up their leg. It'll be very dynamic and exciting. And we can end it with a nice little text effect. So here is the finished result, and I hope you enjoy it. I definitely had fun making it. All right, so that's gonna do it for the video. I hope you learned a lot and you can feel free to leave some suggestions in the comments below for what body part you would like to see next on Anatomy Quick Tips. As always, thank you so much for watching and a big shout out and thank you to all of my wonderful Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. I hope you've been enjoying all the exclusive little videos I've been posting for you guys on there. And finally, this video was made in Corel Painter, so feel free to check out that wonderful program. See you guys.